In this video, I want to talk about what I've learned over a dozen years of traveling, perpetually living overseas, about how to increase productivity. This has been one thing I've really had to learn the hard way over the years. And while I read a lot of productivity experts and often agree with them about things such as don't multitask, batch your tasks, focus on one thing at a time. I agree with a lot of those tips, but I want to talk in this video about specific things that a nomad capitalist should do to make sure that they stay productive. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. The first thing that you're going to have to do if you want to stay productive as a nomad capitalist is be honest with yourself. One thing I've been trying to do uh, as I get a little bit older is to wake up earlier. I was always the night owl. I remember when we were planning our first event, uh, we did a conference with Peter Schiff. Uh, and back in 2013, I was in Asia. The guy helping me was in the US. And I was up till six in the morning sometimes. I was waking up at three in the afternoon. It was kind of depressing. And so I've been trying to get more into waking up early and getting stuff done. But what I'm honest with myself about is I'm not going to be getting a lot of productive work done at eight in the morning. If I'm waking up at eight in the morning, I'm taking that time to do personal stuff. I'm organizing my house. I'm organizing my finances. I'm just taking it as a time to relax and just get into the day before I start the day later. And so part of what you could do is figure out, you know, where's your team going to be located? Where are you going to be located? For me, when I'm in Asia and I've got a team that's largely based in Europe, that's nice because I get to kind of get a lot of the smaller stuff out of the way and then dig into the deeper work uh, later in the afternoon when I'm most productive. So be honest with yourself. When are you productive? You know, don't necessarily fall into the trap because everything we talk about here at Nomad Capitalist is about going where you're treated best, doing what's right for you. And while the trend right now is everyone talking about getting up at five in the morning, if that's not going to work for you, then figure out how to structure your life both structurally and geographically to make sure uh, that you do what actually works for you. The second thing you want to really focus on is having a structure. This is important, I think, in business in general and in life in general, but it's especially more important when you have the layers of complexity of you're traveling, you have different homes, or at the very least, people you're working with are in different time zones, right? So I remember just starting out in business, I was 21 years old, uh, things were starting to pick up that year. And I was talking to a friend of mine in California and saying, hey, I'm going to have to start hiring some people probably. And I remember saying, I don't care when they work or how often they work, how many hours they work as long as they get the job done. And I'm a classic entrepreneur mindset, which I do believe to this day, yes, results are what matters. Not enough people are focused on what's the result. Um, that said, Number one, I think it's just kind of a fallacy that an employee can work without structure. That's why they want to be an employee. They want structure. But as the business owner, as the entrepreneur, I think that you need structure as well. Again, particularly in this nomad capitalist environment. So for me, I'll have a mentoring call Thursdays, 5 to 7 p.m. That's the Asian time. When I go to Europe in the summer, now it's 10 to noon. You know, and if I were to go and spend some time in the Americas, I would find a way to adjust that to where it's just set in stone. It's there. I'm not going to take a flight at that time. I'm going to be sitting in my home or in a hotel room or in a quiet place where I can be dedicated to doing that call. Tuesdays, it's the day that I talk to people that I'm working with and I'm helping. That's the day, right? And I've set it up to where that's the structure. I'm never going to take a flight on a Tuesday. I don't care how much cheaper it is. I don't care if it's more, whatever. I will work around Tuesday as that day to where I batch those tasks and I make sure that everything's getting done. So that therefore, the other days can be structured to be doing other stuff. I can be doing R&D, uh, new ideas or new programs. I can be doing these videos. Uh, I can be doing stuff like that. So to me, structure with your various appointments. You know, I've got a weekly call with different people who, um, who work for me. And we just try and structure it to where it's always happening at the same time. And we try and build in the processes to where, oh, well, now I'm in Colombia, so we've got to change it all over again. If you're doing that as a nomad capitalist, you're going to run into a lot of frustration where you're constantly changing, canceling. Oh, I can't do it. I've got a flight. 
To me, those are all excuses, and I've had to learn that the hard way. I want to clear out all of the complexity by simply having a structure that I've set up to work even as I'm traveling. The number three thing I suggest for increasing your productivity is giving yourself a nice environment. Um, for six and seven figure entrepreneurs that I work with, this is less of an issue than with the, the new digital nomads who are going and, and living on less. Um, but I still see a lot of people for whom this is an issue. Um, personally, I am mostly a hotel guy. Uh, when I'm traveling, I like to stay in a nice hotel. And I remember when this hit me a number of years ago, I had planned to stay in kind of this cheap Airbnb. Not a bad place, but like, I just, I knew it wouldn't have all the things that I want. I like a certain sense of comfort. I like having nice art on the walls. I like having things painted. And so for me, a lot of, you know, Airbnbs just don't have the, the intentional uh, decor. Things aren't lined out to this standard. You know, I'm a little, a little obsessive about, you know, where certain things should be. I like tidiness, I like cleanliness, I like things to be, you know, well laid out. And so hotels have that. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm gonna cancel this kind of cheap Airbnb apartment because it just probably is gonna have all the things that I want. I'm gonna go to the hotel. And what I found is a couple things. Number one, if I'm traveling, I'm gonna stay in a hotel that's a good hotel that I've vetted, that I know that the Wi-Fi works, that I know that the hotel doesn't make excuses. Uh, if there's a problem, they're going to fix it. That I know that it's comfortable. That I know I'm going to get a nice room. Um, I want to make sure that if I'm traveling, that's what I'm going to get. That everything is there with me. And I will actually now travel with certain things to where, oh, if I'm going to Europe, I'm bringing my Asian tea. Because I don't want to drink their garbage, you know, Europe tea in a bag. So I'm going to take account for all those things. The rest of the time, I'm going to be in one of my homes. And those homes are going to be equipped. I'm going to decorate them the way that I want. I'm going to have the tools that I want. I'm not going to cheap out. I'm going to have, again, you know, I like tea. So I'm going to have in every home, I'm going to have the teas that I like. I will literally take teas from Asia and, put, and take them to Europe that they aren't available in Europe, but I want the high quality teas. Why? Because I think that in order to be productive, you want a certain standard of comfort. You want a certain standard of aesthetics. I have found if you're sitting in an apartment with all white walls and like one picture of, you know, something of Frida Kahlo, you know, stuck with a nail to the wall, you're not going to feel as productive. There is a reason why top executives go and stay in the presidential suite at the Ritz Carlton because the couch feels nice. The art is nice. It's nothing too crazy. Nothing's ever jarring at a Ritz Carlton or a St. Regis. The decor is actually very simple. Um, the colors are very simple. They're very neutral, but there's something soothing about it that you just happen to get more things done. So I think setting up an environment that's comfortable and aesthetically pleasing and where you have the comforts that you want, whether it's nice teas or whatever else that you want is important. And the number four thing to be productive is to make sure that you're rewarding yourself because there are a lot of stresses, especially when you're first starting out with traveling. A lot of the higher level people that I talk to say, I don't want to live in three places, Andrew. I want to find one tax efficient place that suits my lifestyle desires. And I want to go there and I'll travel when I want. And so obviously that's going to be less stressful than someone who's traveling to a different country every month. But regardless of which approach you take or, or something in between, I think giving yourself luxuries is important. Okay? Whenever I you know, fulfill an accomplishment, I'll go and I'll reward myself a little bit. I'll get a nice new tea. I'll go and get one of the nice you know, Tom Ford fragrances. And what I'll do is I'll enjoy thinking, how does this fit into the global lifestyle that, that I've created? I'll step back and take some gratitude for being able to create a lifestyle that's intentional and that most people can only dream about. But I think it's so easy as an entrepreneur to just get into the grind of just having to check things off the list, having to just look at accomplishments as if just another day at the office. And I think that rewarding yourself, having some luxuries in life, going out for a nice meal are reminders to yourself that even though you've adjusted your lifestyle, you're going to get all the benefits that come with going where you're treated best. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. I wrote this book, which you can find on Amazon, to distill a lot of the stuff we talk about in these videos and a lot of the stuff I've learned over the last decade plus traveling all around the world, teaching you about how to legally reduce your taxes, 
build your personal freedom and create wealth faster. Definitely get a copy of this book if you want to learn more. Now, if you want to watch more videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications bell so you never miss one of our new videos with more tips on how to go where you're treated best. And if you're already a six or seven figure entrepreneur and you'd like to put these strategies in place for yourself, go to nomadcapitalist.com and learn about how I can help you.